Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. This is Dr. Anusha, fellow of Vitrio Retina and Ocular Oncology and I will be taking you through top 5 articles of this month. I would like to start this episode with a study on secondary salvage intravenous chemotherapy for refractory or recurrent retinoblastoma by Swati et al. It is a retrospective non-randomized interventional case series of 41 eyes of 33 patients with recurrent retinoblastoma in whom the efficacy of secondary salvage IVCs is determined. 17% of patients had group B disease, 7% had group C, 39% had group D and 37% had group E retinoblastoma. All patients received 6 cycles of IVC as primary treatment. Secondary salvage IVC with focal treatment was given for those with recurrent solid tumors, subretinal seeds or persistent solid tumors. Mean number of cycles were 8 and mean follow up period was 43 months globe salvage was achieved in 54% of eyes histopathology proven bone metastasis was seen in 3% of patients and death due to presumed metastasis occurred in 3% of patients in conclusion secondary salvage ivc with appropriate focal treatment served as an alternative to intra arterial chemotherapy or enucleation the next study is on modification of the suprachoroidal buckling technique for the treatment of regmatogenous retinal detachment by Dahmer Bonsar et al In this study three highly myopic eyes of three patients with primary macula on RRD and single superior peripheral retinal break were treated A single surgeon foot pedal control automated suprachoroidal injection of 1% sodium hyaluronate namely Provisc was used for the treatment of RRD Microdose injection kit with a connector and 1 ml syringe designed for the subretinal injection was used to adapt Constellation Vision System console for suprachoroidal injection of Provisc. Complete retinal reattachment was achieved in all eyes without complications. In conclusion, injecting Provisc under foot pedal control provides a more precise and potentially safer suprachoroidal buckling technique compared with the manual technique with more variable injection speed and pressure. The next study under discussion today done by Zeng Yuki et al involves implications of complete posterior vitreal detachments in eyes with central retinal vein occlusion. This is a retrospective longitudinal cohort study of consecutive patients with acute treatment naive central retinal vein occlusion diagnosed between 2009 and 2021 and who had at least 12 months of follow up. Clinical characteristics, treatment patterns and outcomes were analyzed between eyes. stratifies based on the presence or absence of a complete posterior vitreal detachment on OCT at presentation 51% of 102 identified acute treatment naive central retinal vein occlusions had complete PVD at presentation and 49% did not central subfilled thickness and one year intravitreal injection burden was found to be significantly lower in those with complete PVD it was concluded that the assessment of The triomacular interface may serve as a prognostic biomarker in those with acute treatment naive central retinal vein occlusion. For the next study today, Maya Iger Moskovic et al studied variations in clinical presentation and management based on paternal versus maternal inheritance in familial retinoblastoma. It was a retrospective study of 179 patients with retinoblastoma who were treated at a tertiary ocular oncology center. between December 1975 and May 2020 Of the 179 patients included in this study 61% had paternal inheritance and 39% had maternal Those with paternal inheritance were found to be older at presentation with no difference in gender or number of affected family members Tumors in those with paternal inheritance were significantly larger in basal diameter thicker and were located in the macular area There was no significant difference in tumor laterality, need for plaque radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Group B retinoblastoma was seen in 31% of patients with paternal inheritance and only in 8% of patients with maternal inheritance, which was statistically significant. In conclusion, patients with paternally inherited retinoblastoma presented at an older age with larger peripherally placed tumors with advanced ICRB group and were more likely to require enucleation. 
The final study being discussed today is a review of literature on the long-term results of treatment of neovascular AMD using anti-angiogenic drugs by Enrique Fuentes et al. Aim of the study was to synthesize results of various studies published on the long-term results of AMD after anti-VEGF therapy. The mean follow-up of the included studies was 8.2 years. The mean initial visual acuity was 55.3 letters and mean final visual acuity was 50.1 letters. By the end of follow-up period, 67.9% of patients remained stable and 30.1% of patients showed severe loss of visual acuity, that is more than 15 letters. Fibrosis and atrophy were found to be the main cause of long-term visual acuity loss with respective incidence of 52.5% and 60.5% by the end of follow-up period. This concludes Retina Roundup for this month. We will be back next month with more interesting articles. Thank you.